Welcome to Hoyt's Bow Hunting Whitetails. Today is the, is it the 13th of February? 13th. We are, uh, on today's episode, we're gonna talk about what the deer ate this winter. And I'm really looking forward to this because I haven't been around the farm since we quit hunting it back in early January. So I haven't checked out the spots. I don't know what all they ate. Uh, I know a couple spots because we drive past them all the time, like right here where we're starting, mm -hmm. right along the driveway. But as far as getting clear back into the farm, uh, it'll be really interesting to see. Hoyt's Bow Hunting Whitetails is brought to you by Redneck Blinds, Coat of Silence Apparel, Hunt Stand Pro Whitetail, Fuse Accessories, Elevate Tree Stands, B3 Releases and Broadheads, and Hoyt. It's kind of interesting too because it's been a really weird winter. Like mm -hmm. there was that really cold snap blizzard. So how many, like 12, 14 inches of snow on the ground Yeah. for a couple of weeks. And then it's been like 40s. It's been so mild since then. Yeah, it was mild before that. Yeah. And there was, there was a lot of, there were a lot of unique um, maybe characteristics of this past year. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that as we look at the food plots and some of the fields. Uh, but it is interesting what they eat. And you got to keep in mind, we've talked about it quite a bit, but we do have a fairly low deer density. Mm -hmm. So they're not scouring every little green, you know, living thing that to eat. Um, so they're picking pretty much their choice, you know, whatever it is that they want most that day. And um, I know we've talked about it before, but there's a ton of like commercial ag around here. Like it's mostly corn, isn't it? Yeah. But after that gets, I mean, probably before that gets picked, that would be a bigger factor. But then after that, that's probably a big chunk of food that isn't there anymore. Yeah, and they'll, they'll scavenge through the fields even after the combines have gone through too. Uh, so they do continue to feed even in the harvested fields. Uh, but so let's dive into this first spot. Uh, this was a field that I planted originally back in May to uh, soybeans. And I didn't get them deep enough. It was, you know, I was kind of learning the drill and uh, just didn't get the seed deep enough. So as a result, I didn't get really good germination on my beans. So I came back into this and uh, broadcast the tall tine tubers from uh, Whitetail Institute. And that's a turnip, I think it's turnip blend. And it did really well. Uh, I mean, it came up. Man, it was, it was awesome. It came up immediately and filled this plot in. So I was able to save this one, even though it failed originally with the beans, uh, turned into a spot that was really productive and the deer used, utilized it quite a bit. So you always want to keep that in mind. Sometimes if you have a failure due to poor seeding conditions or drought, uh, you can save those spots with those brassica blends like the tall tine tubers. There's a couple other spots on the farm where we planted winter greens and that did really well too. We're standing in the next field down now, a little bit closer to the highway. This one uh, started as a soybean patch as well, and that didn't germinate. And then I uh, drilled a little bit less than a full rate of sorghum into that at the same time that I, I uh, hand broadcast the Whitetail Institute tall tine tubers. So this one had three layers. It had the original beans, which some of, some of them you know, made uh, plants, and it had the tall tine, tall tine tubers, and it had the sorghum. And as you look at this, you can see that the deer, they ate all the beans and almost all of the tall tine tubers, and most of the sorghum. The only sorghum that's left in here, I think, we'll look at a little bit closer, is the, the heads that didn't make seed. I planted this just a little bit late, so I didn't get it all to mature in time, you know, before the first frost. And, You'll be able to see that some of these heads are real chaffy looking. They don't have seed on them. I do like how this plot turned out with the three different layers of planting. You know, hitting the beans first and then coming back. Oh, let's say, I mean, I should have planted them probably in early June, maybe mid-June uh, on the sorghum. But then, you know, putting that in on top of the beans and then coming back later in hand broadcasting the tall time tubers or the winter greens because if the beans do really well, then you don't necessarily have to plant the rest of it. But most times, if there's a, any number of deer at all, they're gonna be feeding pretty heavy on the beans. And you can come back and plant the two additional layers 
to really fill it in. So you have the kind of the best of everything, you know, the legumes in the early summer, and if they make it, you know, great. But if not, then you can fill it in with the stuff that they're gonna eat during the winter. The second spot that we're stopping here is this about a three acre corn plot up the valley. This one did really, really well, grew really well. And again, we were talking earlier about being in a valley on a drought year. Uh, this spot did extremely well. I mean, any farmer would have been proud to call this his commercial field, but that would have been all awesome if the deer would have been eating it. <laughs> So we put a lot of food out there that they just didn't eat. I'd say they've eaten maybe a third at the most, maybe maybe less. There's lots and lots of corn left here. Why do you think that is? Just there was so much food around? Yeah, and if you, you know, we talked about it quite a bit in the fall, but if you look around and you know, we've got tons of drone footage of the farm, most of the trees that you see in this footage are oak trees. And this was a really, really good acorn year. So almost every oak tree had acorns. Mm -hmm. So there were maybe tens of millions of acorns on the ground and they just didn't have a need to go outside of the timber to find food, you know? So you had this awesome food source that they just didn't hardly hit. They started hitting it pretty good during that cold snap. Mm -hmm. But then after the cold snap, they haven't really been in it that much since. How um, late or how long into the winter would you say the acorns were a factor? Like. I mean, I know we were scooping them up in December, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. well, they're still out there now. Yeah. I mean, Carson and I have been cutting a lot of trees on the farm for the TSI work that we're doing for Habitat, and there's still lots of acorns out there, lots of acorns. So I would say that the deer could still be eating them. You know, obviously when they were covered up with, you know, 15 inches of snow, they weren't. Right. But the snow didn't last real long, maybe three weeks, and now I think they're back eating acorns, picking around, you know, browsing. Um, Do you think having that standing corn with ears left was really good during that, uh, when there's snow on the ground because it's something that the deer can find and get to even if everything else is covered? Yeah, it's easy for them to find and eat. Yeah. yeah. So I think, plus it's carbohydrate rich, which is what they're looking for when it's really cold. Um, I just planted too much of it for the conditions. You know, maybe in a normal year, they would have ate all of this, but this year they didn't even begin. So I'm going to break this field up next year. I'll talk about it in another episode, you know, about, uh, you know, what I'm going to do in this plot because I can't put the whole thing into corn again because, you know, why have that many, you know, ears left at the end of the, at the end of the time. And we talked about it some in a past episode, but the first season you hunted this, I think it was 2022, you shot your buck just right there and uh, it was in soybeans at the time. And you said that they did eat all of that that year? Yeah, so, so when it was in beans, they did eat it. And I, I broadcast uh, fall rye into the beans kind of late summer, and that, that filled in some too. So the deer fed on that during the winter. But there wasn't much other food around. This year we did put a lot of food out. So mm -hmm. I think that we spread the deer. Plus again, we talked about it, all the millions and millions of acorns. Mm -hmm. So that's been, Maybe the dominant story, if you really want to know what the deer ate this winter, for most of the winter, they probably ate acorns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, but I just thought you might get a kick out of this one. We talked about it uh, back in December, I think. I had an episode I said, I have too much corn, and uh, I still have too much corn. <laughs> but we've got two more months before I'll seed this. So maybe the deer will eat more of it, you know, here in the late winter, early spring. So let's move on to another spot. We've got more to talk about and more to look at. We were just driving up the trail heading to the food plot up on top of the ridge and I looked down and saw a big pile of acorns and I thought maybe this would prove our point about still being lots of acorns. Look over here on the bank. So this is just one of thousands of spots on the farm that still have acorns. There's, I mean, there's a couple of pretty good sized trees above us here that are, that we're dropping them, but gosh, we, you look down at the trail, there's just hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. 
So they're not even going to begin to eat all the acorns this winter. So I think that's the biggest issue. You know, we keep coming back to that. So I have to be careful not to draw too many conclusions from what they didn't eat in my planted food plots, because maybe in a normal year with, without all these acorns, um, they would have just hammered that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I just thought you'd get a kick out of seeing just this one spot coming up the trail that's just loaded down with acorns. We're at the third stop on our tour. This is uh, that ridge that I hunted quite a bit last season. The two bucks that I was hunting most were living up on here, so I was here a lot. The corn, I thought, would definitely not make it through the winter. You know, we spent quite a bit of time trying to, you know, figure the deer would be in this corn, you know, in November, and they really weren't. But I thought for sure once that cold snap hit that they would wipe this out and I'm seeing on the stalks uh, quite a few ears yet that they haven't eaten. But interestingly enough, around the outside of it, uh, I planted sorghum and I got it in earlier this time. The one on the bottom, I got it in too late. Mm -hmm. But this I got in on time and the deer really hammered that. They ate all of the sorghum and didn't eat all of the corn. Now, isn't that interesting? I would have thought it'd be just the opposite for sure that they would have mopped up the corn and they maybe saved the sorghum for last. It's like a mystery, like it's an mystery. investigation. It's like Nancy Drew book. Yeah. So we're going to really focus on more sorghum for sure. Uh, interesting, you know, because most in my experience, the deer like corn better than sorghum, but. And I feel like you mentioned last year too, that sorghum, since it's not something they probably had much exposure to before, sometimes it can take them a couple of years to catch on and be like, oh, I can eat this. Right. And it doesn't seem like there was any learning curve here at all. No, they went right after it. And then the risk you run into with sorghum is if they get really fond of it, then they'll start eating it as soon as the seed starts to get doughy. Mm -hmm. And that's in September usually, and then you don't have anything for the late season. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that I could rely on it 100%, but I know that it's going to play a role uh, mm -hmm. this year, a bigger role than it did last year. We had, uh, we planted pumpkins mm -hmm. along the edge of this field. And this was the rainbow plot. We planted just yeah. about everything in here. <laughs> yeah. you know, I think there is literally every single thing in here. Yeah. Are there turnips up here somewhere? There are. The, okay, so I think there's everything. Yeah, we, I drilled the winter greens in here. And again, it was so dry last summer that they didn't do very well. I did film the deer eating them some during November, you know, up in here, but it wasn't like a classic um, patch of, of the you know the winter greens where they grow up nice and lush and tall and thick mm -hmm. so they were you know there was some there but just not like you normally would expect it was so dry so that was that was the there was four things up here four or five things we had corn sorghum we had beans to start with right corn sorghum beans yep winter greens and clover clover in the middle pumpkins pumpkins what is six. that six six <laughs> a little smorgasbord so Buffet. We learned something at least. We learned what they will eat. Um, and they did eat the pumpkins, so I'd come back to that. We put those in kind of right around the outside edge, thinking that they would vine, you know, out, outward away from the field. And they did. Um, we had quite a few pumpkins. They didn't start eating them until I, I smashed a few of them in early November. And then I looked in a few weeks later and they were all gone. So we're going to plant more pumpkins too around the outside of our plots just for, I mean, it's fun if nothing mm -hmm. else. So w w there was a quote that said, uh, even an idiot can plant pumpkins. And uh, I kind of live by that because I proved that even an idiot, well, I shouldn't say plant, even an idiot can grow pumpkins. Right. So. Because an uh, idiot can plant anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could have proved that too. All right, we better shut this off before we incriminate ourselves any further. We're at the fourth and final stop of our deer food tour. This is the open gate. This spot has food on the inside of the gate and on the outside. I think this one, the deer actually did clean this one out. Uh, they, they hit this pretty hard and there's not a lot of other food up on top of this, this ridge on this end of the farm. So we'll take a quick look at this one. Uh, it's just corn behind us here. And I do think it's wiped out. And then inside the open gate, it was, uh, Whitetail Institute Maximum, Max Attraction, I think it was called. It's a brassica and, and uh, oats blend. And we didn't have a lot of rain during the late summer, so it, it didn't really do awesome. It grew, but uh, 
they wiped it out too. And then I came back and broadcast uh, Imperial Whitetail Clover into that. So that should pop up. And then acorns too. Yeah, nature, nature did oversee the whole thing with acorns. Uh, so this, this part of the farm probably didn't have a ton of food, something we gotta fix maybe for this coming year, but what was here, they wiped out. As it turns out, they didn't eat anywhere near all of this corn either. This was only probably just a little bit more than a half an acre. So I don't think I'm gonna to have to make this plot any bigger next year. At first standing over there, I thought that they had wiped this out. But the only stuff that they'd really eaten was the stuff that we knocked down. The stuff that's standing back here, it's got uh, tons and tons of corn left in here. So even with that cold snap and the snow that we had and you know a decent number of deer feeding in this part of the farm, they still didn't clean out this corn. Well, that's it for this episode. I'm gonna come back again and talk more specifically about what I'm gonna, what adjustments I'm gonna make. Uh, there's, there's another part of the farm in that direction that doesn't have as much food. We just didn't get there today, but I thought this one was gonna be fed out, but it wasn't. But I know that other end, they had more, or we had more deer over there and uh, not as much food. So uh, anyway, I thought you might get a kick out of seeing what they ate, and in some cases what they didn't eat. Uh, a little bit surprising that they didn't eat more than they did. The biggest takeaway is that they didn't eat nearly as much corn. Yeah. It seems to be the recurring theme. Yeah, I think so. I think maybe you ought to lean more towards the greens, you know, the, the, for some reason on this in this area, whether it's just this farm or what, but they just didn't seem to care as much for corn. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for this week. We'll see you right back here again soon for the next episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big.